Okay. Okay, so it is 105. So I'm going to get started. So thank you guys for joining. I'm really excited about this workshop. My name is Nora Bashara from Upcycle Design School. And for our monthly workshop this month, I'm really excited to have Carolina Bedoya from um, Make Renew. And I will let you take it from here. All right, well, thank you so much. And um, again, my name is Carolina Bedoya and I would like to welcome you to this Circular Design Solutions Workshop with Making You. It's a privilege to have your time and attention. So for that, I'm really thankful. Thank you for being here. I also want to thank Noor and the Upcycle Design School for providing this space for people, uh, you know, like-minded people to come and, and share their experience and learn from each other and hopefully, you know, Know, become a bigger force into moving the fashion, the textile, and the clothing industry towards a more sustainable future. So once again, thank you so much for being here. And, you know, the, the way in which the uh, workshop is structured uh, will go as follows. Uh, I'll talk about making you our story, why Carmen and I decided to uh, join forces and do this work together. Uh, we're going to talk about what circular design solutions uh, are what, what it means to have circular design solutions and how it can help businesses uh, become more sustainable. Uh, we're, we'll talk about tips and, and things that we have um, experienced and learned along the way uh, for anyone who's interested in doing a remanufacturing um, company uh, process. So we'll share, you know, some of the stuff that we know. And, um, you know, I will also share um, our vision to the future. And disclaimer, this is based on our experience, years of working in the industry. This is our opinion of how we see uh, the industry moving forward. So that's how it's going to go. And if you guys have any questions in between, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them right away. So please feel free to, you know, to, to ask and hopefully we feel comfortable and, and relaxed to be able to share um, all together. So I will share my screen with you right now. And hopefully it works. Is everyone seeing this? All right, so... Okay, um, Carmen and I, um, you know, we have worked in the industry for, um, you know, a quite some time, and we have noticed that the companies, designers, brands don't necessarily have a clear solution for their waste. The, uh, the industry is so fragmented when it comes down to uh, processes of life extension. Um, so, you know, we, we saw the need and this is why we created um, Making You. Uh, we want to help brands, designers, companies uh, to keep textiles and, and clothes out of the landfill. Um, so, you know, we believe at Making You gives, gives brands a ready-made uh, a chain uh, where we are going to um, present them with the possibilities of uh, solutions. So there's no real, there's no one solution for waste, uh, either for pre or post consumer. It, it really depends on the quantity, quality, uh, even uh, material, even color. So there's no one solution. And we are very aware of this. And that's why uh, we are providing a service at scale uh, in the field of uh, repair, remanufacturing, and fiber to fiber recycling, so that companies can achieve their sustainability goals, uh, create loyal customer engagement and also increase their revenue and so we're driven by our values we strongly believe that we need to utilize what already exists and we need to come up with design solutions that address these issues in order to maximize the value um, of, of, the, of the resources that we're utilizing. And obviously we want to be economically successful. We want our partners to be economically successful. So our purpose on, on making profit is with, with a purpose, uh, with a good purpose. Um, so as, as many of you 
are already familiar with with the problem you know um we are too and and for us the only waste we see in the fashion industry is wasted resources and wasted money um so here my my partner in crime carmen put together this graph which you know clearly clearly shows uh you know the 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 current life cycle, the current uh, system that we have right now. So, you know, over a hundred billion clothes are being produced every year. And it's a shame that only 73, that it, it's a shame that 73% it's going straight to landfills or are being uh, incinerated. So this is, this is horrendous, right? All the energy, all the resources that have taken to produce uh, these garments are basically thrown away um, or incinerated. So we, we clearly see that, you know, after uh, customers have used them, uh, they go, you know, straight to the trash or they go to donations where, you know, the, the, site, the life cycle is very limited. And we notice that only 1% it's being done cycle. It's being reutilized in one way, which is down cycle. So for our solutions, um, we want brands, resellers, clothing collectors to be able to make, um, to be able to utilize in, in these resources, right? So we offer circular design solutions at scale to extend the life of garments and grow the business sustainably, our systems and supply chain help us use resources that already exist. We source and sort discarded and damaged garments to repair, remanufacture, recycle, um, and providing, well, providing innovative products and materials to include in their offering. So this is what we're offering our customers. Um, along the way, we collect compelling data and unique insights that will help you improve your products, your footprint, and your brand. Um, we notice that when we uh, collect information, right, when we are sorting, when we gather material, we're able to tell uh, the designers um, what are the flaws, what are the things that we're noticing when the garments come back to us, when we're talking about a take back program and we are able to recover the inventory. There's, there's a lot of data that can be collected and be able to put it back into the design process so that we are actually designing, we're helping brands and designers uh, design and make clothes that are already designed into circularity based on the information that they're able to gather from their uh, post-consumer uh, material or waste. Um, after we work our magic, uh, we package and cheap uh, the inventory and again we provide data insights that will help you that will help your business um, move forward. So, you know, to, to describe a little bit more the services that we're providing, and these are all circular solutions. Uh, we have repair. Um, so, you know, many times we have customers that bring us their uh, damaged inventory, and these are garments that are in great condition, other than they have a small flaw, they might be missing a, a button, the zipper is not working. So we want to be able to invest energy into keeping them as they were originally intended for as long as possible. So we're repairing them. We also recognize that there are garments that uh, the fabric still has the potential to be utilized as fabric, but the overall garment is not. So we are going to take this 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 um, inventory and remake it into new garments. And our goal is to be able to do this at scale and make uh, garments that are not necessarily uh, identified as being made out of garments. We want to be able to uh, scale um, and, and increase the perceived value of these garments. And finally, uh, we have recycling garments that are really truly at the end of their life cycle and are, and are not sellable. We want to be able to offer this process as well, uh, where we're transforming uh, the fibers into new material, whether it's through um, mechanical recycling or whether it's through uh, chemical recycling. So these are the offerings that um, we're presenting our customers 
as circular design solutions. And you know, this the idea of circular design solutions can be implemented um, since the very beginning, or if you're already an established brand and established company and want to start including this, this is you know, this is something that can be uh, put into place at any level of the uh, company's development or the designer's uh, career or, yeah. So who are we? We are designers, artists, product developers, sustainability experts and innovators. We have a unique a combination of skills and experience that makes us uh, you know, the perfect people to be able to lead this work uh, through making new. Um, and you know, I'll talk about a little bit of my experience in the industry. Um, I actually started working with Eileen Fisher and I hold different roles within Eileen Fisher. Um, I started as a workshop facilitator, actually a, a upcycling workshop facilitator uh, for the Eileen Fisher Leadership Institute um, where we were teaching um, high school students uh, empowering and leadership um, aspects and, and attitudes, but also, um, you know, supported by what means to be uh, sustainable and what means to be, um, you know, have that mind in which we want to extend the life cycle of garments. Um, soon after I became the uh, makerspace uh, coordinator, and again, this was a way in which we were able to bring the community together uh, while teaching them about sustainability, teaching them about uh, upcycling. I find that this was a great way to um, for Eileen Fisher to create a trusting relationship, not only with its customers, employees, but their families as well, because everyone was invited. So this was a really a great great way to create awareness and trust around, you know, their, their sustainable efforts. Um, later, I became the sorting operation and inventory manager. Um, Eileen Fisher has a take back program. And so we were taking everything that the customers wanted to return. So their pre loved garments. And obviously, we received them in every condition, uh, garments that were uh, basically like new that were ready to be resold and garments that really needed, um, you know, a, a process um, for the life of those fibers to be extended. So this is where, um, you know, I was able to develop a, a sorting operation at scale where we were able to sort by fiber, by style uh, and by uh, volume. So this is really important, um, you know, identifying material, style, quality and volume was essential to determine the best use and the next life cycle of the garments. Um, so this is another, another circular solution, another, another circular design solution when it comes down to your inventory. Like really knowing exactly what you have determines the way in which you are going to be able to use it uh, in the next life. Uh, so as an artist and designer myself, um, I'm fascinated with the idea of developing new processes and ways in which we can extend the life of clothes uh, while creating innovative, sy innovative systems. So, you know, I started working uh, very closely with Carmen among other members of the company to create the tiny factory. This was a space created to explore and develop remanufacturing systems at scale, like felting and rezone collections. Um, and we were able to really uh, give value and make use of the unsellable inventory that Eileen Fisher um, had at the moment. And, you know, um, my, my partner in, in crime and my business partner, um, Carmen, she is a Parsons graduate. Um, she actually won a Eileen Fisher and CFDA um, fellowship um, a few years ago. And this is where uh, we were, you know, Put together to walk to work to come up with solutions for the unsellable inventory. Um, so this is where we have been able to really put our skills um, together to come up with real solutions. And you know, Eileen Fisher, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the tiny factory, but um, this was a space where she really invited everyone 
to come in because she wanted to be as, as, as transparent and as clear with her efforts and really show everyone uh, because this is not an effort that only one can do by itself, right? It's about collaboration and, and sharing our experiences so that we can grow together. And this is this was a space where you know people from across industries would come in and see what we were doing. And and you know often the the um comments were this is wonderful but um not all the companies have the resources to invest in doing this or they have the time or the expertise so this is where you know we come in um to, yes please I'm sorry to interrupt um that so that's how i met carolina and carmen was taking a tour of the tiny factory which was so inspiring and so amazing to see do you know if they're still allowing tours not at the moment, no. Not at the moment. No, not at the, due to COVID, um, you know, COVID. the facilities are closed, yes. yes. But I'm, I'm sure that they'll be able to, um, you know, once, you know, this whole this whole thing passes through, um, I'm sure that they'll be able to open up their doors again. And just to let you know, I'm no longer at, at Eileen Fisher. However, Carmen continues to work with them, um, you know, in the same area of extending the life cycle of, of the garments. So, you know, what are, what are circular uh, design solutions and how can they help move the um, industry forward? Um, so before we, before we explore what are circular design solutions, we need to explore or maybe just refresh our memory on what is circular economy, right? So, Many of you might be already aware, but this is just to become a, a little bit more familiarized and put things into perspective. So the objective of a circular economy is to maintain the value, is to optimize the use of objects and not their production, to preserve the use value of all resources at their highest utility and value levels. And this quote is by uh, Walter Stahel. Uh, and you see how I, I, you know, the word value is in green because, you know, when we, when we hold value on something, we tend to take care of it, right? We tend to keep it, we, te we tend to preserve it. And so this is the, the real mind shift that needs to happen at all levels, from producers, manufacturers, to uh, consumers, right? To, to really uh, value the energy, not only the, the human resources, the, res the natural resources, um, and all the energy water that goes into making whatever it is that we're making, right? So currently, um, the textile and clothing sector is facing uh, a severe environmental threat, right? And it comes in different forms, uh, depletion of non-renewable resources, massive energy, chemicals and water demands, uh, severe environmental pollution and damage, huge waste generation, uh, human toxicity, among other things. So in an attempt to um, address and mitigate the negative impact of the fashion and the clothing industry, we must explore and adapt uh, circular design solutions. So, you know, what, is, what are circular design solutions? What's the purpose? Um, so the purpose of circular design is to design products that can be made to be made again time and time and time again. Um, in a circular system, products are designed, produce, consume, and maintain in a, in, a, in a circular system within the society uh, with the maximum product and life um, efficiency. So this is the whole idea, right? We're designing products that since the very beginning, we know how they're going to be 
um, reutilize, whether we're thinking about making them uh, easy to disassemble, uh, whether we know how different parts are going to work and how we can they're just take one part and, and plug in a new one uh, in order to make it more efficient and to design it since, since the very beginning with that intent. And with this, with this in mind, I want us to explore this quote. Um, it says, do not repair what is not broken. Do not remanufacture something that can be repaired. And do not recycle a product that can be remanufactured. And this is really thinking about the energy investment, right? Um, every work that we do and where we're working with where our customers, you know, we we need to know their their um, sustainable so their sustainability commitment, right? And uh, we also need to think about the economics, but also the the investment in energy. We're not going to recommend a customer to do a fiber to fiber recycling um, project when we know that we're able to do a repair program that it will be uh, you know, less energy investment to do a repair program instead of doing a fiber to fiber. And this is just an example of how we are operating and the mind thinking that we have when we're talking to our customers. Uh, we're, we're always thinking about the energy investment, um, even when we're doing you know, a, a, recycling, a recycling project. So, you know, this principle, it's really, it was really presented by Walter Stagel, and it describes the hierarchy of the different procedures that can take place to extend the life cycle of a garment. Um, so this is essentially it. Um, circular design solutions will have to be implemented across industries to have a real impact. So brands, designers, companies will increase their revenue by recovering the resources that they originally invested on. So this is a really good way for, for um, companies to become sustainable. It's by applying these circular uh, solutions to regain, to recapture the value, to make something new and keep innovating as well. So is there any, any questions so far? I'm not sure if I'm going too fast, but you, you guys let me know. There was one question uh, by Charlene earlier on asking by which categories do you sort the inventory? Okay, that's a great question and thank you. That's really critical. It, it really depends on what the customer brings us, but we're looking, essentially we need to know the material. We need to know the quality of the inventory and we need to know the value. These are ba the basic um, uh, ways in which we sort and, and then later determine what would be the best use. Um, obviously, we need to know the quality to determine whether it could be repair, whether it could be uh, made into new clothes, or whether it has to be, um, you know, uh, recycled from scratch. Uh, we need to know the color. So many times, uh, you know, the color will guide, especially for fiber to fiber recycling. Uh, we would avoid a lot of extra chemicals and dyes added if we're able to sort by color uh, and just process it as, as it is together. Um, and we need to know the quantity so that we're able to plant a, you know, whichever way, whichever uh, circular solution uh, we have available. Um, you know, so for remanufacturing, it, it depends of how many of, of the uh, style that you're making. But recently we made a dress out of uh, men's button shirts and it took five to seven uh, of these shirts to make one dress. So again, quantity really uh, tell, you know, determines how much and how many uh, other products we're able to produce. So getting, getting started with your fashion remanufacturing, whether you already have a brand and whether you already have a system implemented and whether your system in the, at the moment is very linear, um, circular design solutions, like I mentioned before, can be 
applied and can start working at any level of your of your development, whether um, you know it's at the end or or whether you want to have it, or whether you got, you're starting a business and you want for these solutions to be at the core of your mission, um, it, it's doable at any level. So. One of the things that um, we must have in, in mind in order to be able to have a successful remanufacturing operation is the reverse logistics, right? How and where are you getting your inventory? Um, how are you gonna get it? How are you getting it from point A to from point B? Who are your partners? And who are the people that you need to work with in order to um, develop solutions, to come up with solutions? And, you know, like I, I mentioned before, brands and, and designers don't necessarily have the tools and the know-how. They're experts in their trade. They know how to make something, but they don't necessarily have the experience of knowing how to recapture the value and how to transform it. And this is why, you know, we, we created Making You so that we can breach that gap and be your strategic partner into getting you at this level. Um, so the planning, the careful, careful design, planning and control activities, uh, you know, it involves the collection of products, the sorting, the inspection, the transportation, and, you know, the transportation to the facility where it's going to be recycled or to your studio. Um, you know, design for circularity, even if you're making a remanufacturing um, a collection, thinking of what is going to be once the, gar the, the garment is done with that life cycle, right? Like thinking ahead, like I'm, I'm making a dress out of men's shirts. What's the, what is the possibility of that shirt, of that dress in the next life, right? Um, so implementing this idea since the beginning will really help you, will really help your whole operation be more sustainable and efficient. And if it's efficient, it translates into money. You're able, your, your revenue increases as your uh, operation is more and more efficient. And, uh, you know, like I said, products need to be designed, to be redesigned. And when we're making these garments or when we're making these products, we really need to think about, you know, are the characteristics of the product are going to fulfill the requirements for circularity? So is the zipper uh, easily replaceable? Uh, can, can you disassemble the garment in a way that you are doing it you know, easier and uh, your, um, your operation is becoming more efficient? So all of these different things we need to think about. Um, when we're thinking, when we're designing a, a plan for circular solutions. Um, another thing that will help, um, that will help you in your remanufacturing um, endeavor and efforts would be the increased productivity in sorting uh, and also the increased prime quality of the incoming material, right? Um, for remanufacturing, we're using materials and textiles that have already been out there. Um, so, you know, it's really important for us to be able to have good quality to, to make the new uh, garment or the new dress uh, last longer. And, you know, this, this was also something that really helped Eileen Fisher. I made a note to mention this, that Eileen Fisher um, has been able to establish a circular, a circular program because of the quality of her fabrics. That was a given. Like we knew the fabrics will last because they have high quality. And also, you know, the overall design of her garments um, gave us a lot of, uh, of fabric to play with uh, because of the overall design and the aesthetic of um, her brand. So, um, you know, this made it a lot easier uh, for her to establish all these different next life cycle um, processes because of the quality. So if we're able to uh, work with um, textile collectors and, and maybe charities uh, to have this higher quality material uh, will guarantee better results. 
Um, again, knowing your inventory, uh, being able to uh, be in touch or, or have a close relationship with your factories, knowing the waste that you're producing uh, will determine what are the different options to keep it in, the cl in a closed loop. So really knowing your inventory um, is, is essential. Um, also communicating your uh, sustainability efforts to your customers, Something that really helped Eileen Fisher was the way in, she, in which she communicated with her customers and the relationship and trust that she built. Because now customers, uh, they're looking not only for a product, they're looking for the experience. They're, they want the experience of feeling good. Um, they want to experience, you know, they, okay, I made a I bought this garment, I bought this product, and it's making me feel good because it was made sustainably. And I know that it's going to have a next life after I'm done with it. Uh, communicating this is really essential uh, for your, for your um, company to be successful because it's an effort that needs to be uh, made and include all the different, um, you know, um, actors, so all the different people that are involved in this exchange of services. Um, so everyone needs to be, you know, included and acknowledged and in a way, uh, you know, be responsible for their choices. So, you know, these are the different ways in which you can, you know, increase the success of your of your brand of your remanufacturing um, operation, um, and finally, um, you know the way that we see the future and and where we're going. Um, it's about collaboration. It's about coming together. It's about sharing our experiences, and and this is why we wanted to be here with you today to share everything that we have learned so that we can grow. Right. Um, it is really difficult. Um, you know, a few years ago, it was difficult to be able to share this information and like trust. I, like everybody was keeping it to themselves. And I don't think that this is going to move us forward. So really collaboration, um, working together, you know, what it, you know, the waste, someone's waste could be the raw material for someone else. And this is about collaborating and share that information. Um, it will be key to the future. Um, something else that we see helping us and moving us forward would be technology. Um, you know, there's tons of technology being developed at the moment and we cannot wait any longer for these uh, technologies to, to be, um, you know, at scale. Uh -huh. um, so we have, um, image processing identification um, technology, sorting technology will also increase productivity and, and profits. So technology will really be a key uh, factor into, um, you know, making scalable changes into taking us into a more sustainable um, industry. So this is how we see it, uh, collaboration, technology, working together, uh, being very mindful of what we produce, what we're making, why are we making it? Um, it's, it's where we see the future going in the industry. So yes, this is this is why we're here. This is this is making you and, and this is our contribution to, to, you know, to the change that is happening already, that we clearly see it. We have another question um, from Gabby. She's asking, are you working with only brands that already have take back programs and that already have used inventory from their customers? Mm, great question. Thank you so much. So no, we are actually working with, we want to extend our, our experience to everybody. So even if you don't have a take back program established, we want to help you. Uh, and walk you through that process. So we will we'll work with you with the logistics, with the reverse logistics, uh, and, and really be with you all throughout the steps. Um, so we're working with both people that have already inventory uh, collected, and we're exploring the ways in which we can start helping brands collect or establish a take back program. Great question. Thank you. Also, I have a question. Yeah. Do you guys also take on 
upcycled production, for example, a brand that already has their designs and they're just having difficulty finding, finding a manufacturer that will produce it. Because I know from personal experience, that is one of the big challenges with this type of, of designing. Yes, and, and that's a really great point because um, there needs to be a training, right? There's no manual right now on how to do remanufacturing um, systems, right? There's nothing really, there's tons of research, but there's no manual where you could just follow step by step. So, you know, developing this system, supporting each other uh, will really help us move, move us forward. And, and, you know, to your point, um, we want to be able to provide you with the solution. So if you have, uh, um, if you have a remanufacturing um, brand, we want to be able to provide you with our expertise, with our experience, right? And it comes in the sorting, in the form of sorting, uh, really allocating, laying out, even the deconstruction process, right? If you're bringing us garments, um, we will we will do all that work for you. We'll deconstruct it, we'll cut it, we'll lay it out. Um, and it really, that experience, really comes from doing this, you know, many, many times because we learn after processes and we, we, we learn after, you know, uh, making a, a system, how to improve it. So yes, we, we want to be able to offer our services um, to everybody who has the need um, to do this. There's another question from Charlene. Are you already implementing any of the mentioned tech or are you planning to in the near future? Um, and I am doing my PhD on the topic. That's wonderful. We're not, we're, we don't have, currently we don't have the resources to be, to implement this kind of technology, but this is something that is at the core of our business and our business uh, plan. We are definitely working towards getting this technology so that we can offer this at scale and, and really become a, a place, a hub where everyone can come in and take advantage of these, these resources because not everyone has to go out there. Uh, we often say this, that brands and designers, they don't have to do reinvent themselves from scratch. They can come to partners like us who will help them, um, you know, develop this process and they keep doing what they're passionate about they keep keep doing what they're they have been doing just that we're adding this extra support to uh, make them sustainable that's great i actually have another question please um, please please so another challenge for brands that are going through this process are um, just actually finding the materials. So hypothetically, as a, as a brand, I have a design, this is the materials I wanna work with. Can I come to you and will you guys also help with that process as well? Yes, yes. So we want to be able to offer you, you come to us and you bring us your, you, either you bring us your own material or you want to source uh, materials from us. And yes, we want to be able to provide you with the necessary resources for you to establish a program like this for your company. So yes, and we we have a strategic partners in the industry. We're working with a lot of different people, textile collectors, uh, even resellers, uh, in order to be able to provide this inventory. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm just gonna, hi everyone. Uh, I'm just gonna say my questions verbally because I have a few of them. Um, I just first wanted to say thank you so much for this presentation. And I've been following your work at Eileen Fisher um, and Carmen's work there for so long. And you guys are true pioneers in this space. And it's just thank you. really, really incredible to see this next step. Um, for me, like I've been upcycling since high school. It's just something in my own culture. My parents are from Venezuela, so. Um, but for me now, upcycling and trying to actually sell it and trying to actually like start a business, I'm having trouble with the pricing of it. 
So like pricing, like, because the pricing changes, right? Like I'm not getting like a yardage of fabric from a supplier of like a basic price of what that would be. Like the prices change, you know, from wherever I'm sourcing them. And then the labor costs are kind of different because each piece that you're upcycling, like there's different components. Like you first have to take apart, you know, the, the, the shirt or the pants or whatever the jeans and then make it into something else. So there's just so much more involved, I think, in repurposing and upcycling. Um, can you speak to pricing of remanufactured and upcycled garments and how, how that kind of works? Yes, it is, it is a real challenge. It's something that uh, we are experiencing and addressing. And this is why the, the demand needs to increase so that there's more uh, standards being created. At the moment, um, I feel that we, as we go, we're building and establishing all these new processes um, that are going to be, you know, since we're starting, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get there. Um, and the idea is to be able to create standards. Um, and, you know, it depends, it, it, it's all about for us and my, and my experience is all about the operation. How efficient can the operation be and how trained can the people that you're working with be? Because, um, you know, the more familiar they are with an operation, uh, the more familiar with the system, the, the more efficient, um, you know, the, the service they're providing will be. Um, it is a challenge and we are working on creating standards. Um, it's difficult, I would have to say, um, but like I mentioned, uh, we're, we're building it as we go. And I'm trying to stop my presentation. I took it off the screen already because we were talk we were answering questions, okay. so no worries. Um, okay. there's, there's another question from Lucia. Um, in the case of small scale companies, parentheses, small volume waste, the garments that need to be recycled into fibers and yarns somehow return to the original companies or is this derived to other industries? So for smaller, for smaller productions, uh, for fiber to fiber recycling, uh, there's, uh, there's honestly a minimum that needs to be, uh, that, need, that is required for a fiber to fiber um, process. Right now, I believe that for any fiber to fiber recycling, uh, the minimums are at 2000 pounds. And that's just for a very like basic, um, you know, uh, development. Um, so it would have to be, you know, if you're a smaller brand and your inventory, you know, is not as large, you're not able to collect 2,000 pounds in a relatively short period of time, then that would be, uh, you know, solution would be collaborations, right? Are you willing to mix your inventory with someone else's inventory that have the same issue and want to produce a fabric? And again, collaboration, right? Can we put our, can we join forces? Can we put our inventory uh, and come up with a, a, with a textile that we could potentially both use? Or I'll, I'll buy you the inventory or, you know, it, it, it's about collaborating and coming into, into terms of how to work together. Um, you know, the other option would be to, to store it. It's not the ideal, right? But if you want to be able to keep your inventory and not mix it with someone else, then, you know, it's just a matter of storing it until you have the, the amount required to, to recycle it. Um, so it's all about collaboration or just thinking very strategically uh, of what you want. And if you, as a customer, come to us and you bring us 2000 pounds of your inventory and you want a textile at the end, we'll give you a textile made from your inventory. If you want um, to be able to come up with a, a textile material or even a product, whether it's a bag, whether it's a, a shirt, um, you know, whatever it is, then we'll be very clear and transparent with you and work with your needs. So, you know, I hope I, I answered your question, but yes. 
Okay. That's great. One more question um, from me. I don't know if anyone else has any more questions, but do you also help companies that don't currently do a take back program, but they want to get started in all of this? Do you help them organize the take back program as well? Or do they have to do that ahead of time? We want to be able to work with them and walk them through the logistics. Um, you know, we want to be a strategic partner. And since we have the experience and the know-how, like we've done it, um, you know, bringing that expertise to the table will really help the brand uh, move forward. So you don't have to have a take back program. You don't need to have an idea, just the desire and the commitment to be able to do it. Um, so, yes. Whichever case it is, we are he we're here to provide that service. That's great. Thank you, yes. Does anyone else have any more questions? I would, sorry, it's me again. <laughs> I would be curious to hear, um, I think another really big challenge with all of this is the distribution and the transportation of all of these things. Like you were saying earlier, like getting you know, all this used inventory to one place to kind of actually work with it. Can you say, mm -hmm. to, is that kind of a similar thing where you have to look for efficiencies and build, you know, systems? Um, I'm guessing it is, but can you speak to a little bit more about like, what's the biggest challenge with that? Like with the yes. distribution and with the transportation and things like that? Yes. So, you know, uh, one of the bigger uh, one of the bigger challenges that we are um, facing is, you know, convincing convincing um, companies to have a take back program. Right. So allowing space within their their environment uh, for a collection point. Right. Um, there needs to be investment in time, resources. Right. At, at the company level. Who's going to source, who's going to pack all this? So there needs to be a commitment by the company um, in order to allow this. And, you know, the other aspect is the customer, right? Because we're producing products. Um, we sell them. The customer really owns them. Um, so it's about customer engagement. Um, how can we make the customer a key player into this, right? So it's trusting that the customer will feel encouraged and will have an incentive to return it back to us. So we actually have a couple of, um, you know, uh, maps where, you know, we utilize the existing space of the company of the designer studio, and we're going to be placing a box in there where customers that usually come in, they become aware, they know, oh, they have a take back program. And they're, they're you know, they're, there's a lot of footprint, right? They're, they're walking by, they're coming in. So asking the customer to return the garment to this location, um, it's helpful. And we also, you know, have the, op the option uh, for the customer to mail it. And this, this is something, you know, uh, different, different um, steps and different um, levels of, of um, you know, like how, how, invested are you into doing this right and and you might want to use some pr money to cover for the shipping and you know this is just different things that uh, need to be explored because um, it is a challenge uh, but again logistics and uh, operation efficiency will take us to that to that level where you know it's easy and and nowadays you know the facility to collaborate with with providers, right? Like like Amazon, UPS, like utilizing existing um, services and collaborating with them uh, will really make this whole process a lot easier. So it's all about collaboration. Again, you know, something that comes up um, time and time again is it's collaborating. How can we work together? What resources do you have that I can take advantage? And what experiences do I have that you can take advantage? So it's all about this, this collaboration in, into making this new ecosystem. That's a great question. Thank you. And I hope that, you know, as, as the demand grows for, for uh, renewable uh, materials, um, you know, that the whole system will be more clear and, and paths will be, you know, more easily to walk through. So that's, that's our hope. Definitely, thank you so much.
Thank you for your questions, appreciate it. Great, thank you so much. Um, does anyone have, anyone else have any last questions before we wrap up? So well, thank you so much, Carolina. And speaking of collaboration, thanks so much for collaborating with Upcycle Design School and for guest hosting our workshop this month. And thank you guys for attending. And I think these were great questions. And I always learned so much in these workshops myself. So um, thank you guys again. And the recording will be posted on the Upcycle Design School blog and on YouTube along with notes, so. No, right. Thank you, Noor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your great questions. I really appreciate it. If you have any other follow-up questions, please visit our website, follow us on Instagram. Uh, we'll keep you posted on everything that we are doing and that we will be doing. So thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.